Probably where the Crosswinds Church is. Oh, yeah. Probably. So it's back there in the back if you want. I just, somebody must put it back there. It wasn't me. It was Regina. She did it. It's her fault. It's interesting. Our Our prayers are kind of like a contract with God. When you sign a contract and you get down to the end and say amen, that's it. And so God is a, a God who answers prayer. So you, when you ask, the Bible says, ask and you will be answered. Seek and you shall find. Knock on the door will be open to you. So when you ask and believe God for stuff, you have the thing you prayed about, so then you can begin to thank God for that thing. Amen. Amen. Right. We don't want to get to a place where if it hasn't happened in a while that we create an Ishmael out of the deal. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is go ahead and believe God and let that thing set until it comes to pass. Hallelujah. So turn with me to John the 11th chapter, which has nothing to do with that probably. <coughs> We talked about on Wednesday, no, Sunday night last, about no natural way to have things happen. No natural way. What was the word that came today? It says, I got some idols in your life. Return to your first love. Amen. And the second part of that was step into what God has for you. You already got it. That's right. So each of us here has a call on their life. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this place. Each of you here has something God has called you to do. And some, some are fulfilling that thing. I don't believe anybody is fulfilling that thing 100% yeah. at this point in time. Hallelujah. So, we got a ways to go. Thank God. we got room to grow, room to move, room to expand. Not room to quit. Not room to give up. Not room to back up. Not room to shut up. That's God is telling you to sit down and shut up. He hasn't told me that today, so I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, so, Lord, we commit this time to you and your word. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing up in such a powerful way to break every chain. To break every chain. Thank you, God. And so, Lord, I thank you for breaking chains off some of your people today. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Kim had to go, I see. She told me she was going at first. But, you know, those tongues that came forth were, were not only for her, were not only for us, but for her specifically. I, I forgot she was leaving, and, and she was worried about her, her going to Florida. I think she's going to fly. And you know how hard it is to fly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, arms get tired and whatnot, so praise the Lord. So there in John 11, John the 11th chapter. Um, I was thinking this week about uh, uh, no natural way. No natural way things can happen. In other words, supernatural things. In order to have supernatural things happen, we're going to have to see in a different realm. Because what you can see, you can believe. Your mind is is uh, conditioned to believe what you see. 
right? You know, when you walk out in the street and see a car going by, it's a car. I'm not going to go out in the street and get run over. Your mind is conditioned to believe what you see. The Bible says we are not people that walk by what we see, but by what we believe. But in order to believe something, you need to see it first. So we need to see in a different realm, right? And in John 11 here, it's interesting. This is where Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And it's interesting. The whole chapter is about how people were looking at things. So I'm just going to read some verses out of this whole thing. I'm going to jump around a little bit. In the 8th verse of the 11th chapter, it says there, The disciples said to him, Rabbi, Lately the Jews sought to, sought to stone you, and you are... Well, we're going to have to read the whole thing. I see it. As I was studying this, I guess I was reading the whole thing, and it didn't make any difference. So, in the first verse it says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, in the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary, who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus, was sick. Now this is Mary. Went in, got the revelation that Jesus was going to die and she was anointing him for his death. She got the revelation that he was the Lord and he was going to die and be resurrected. She knew all this stuff. And this is the way she functioned. Okay? Therefore the sisters sent to him, Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, him who, him who you love is sick. Don't we bring that to God sometimes? Lord, I know you love so-and-so. And I know they serve you, Lord. And I know they believe in you. And I know they love you, Lord. So, you know, we're trying to explain God why he should go ahead and bless this person. <laughs> As if he wouldn't anyway. Yeah. Just because we ask him. Praise the Lord. So it says there, when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Ooh, isn't that good? I want you to know that sometimes when you do supernatural things, God glorifies you through it. Doesn't He? Now, just because you get glorified and get... He who humbles Himself will be exalted in due time, right? Mm -hmm. On this earth, God sometimes exalts people. I mean, look at Billy Graham. He got exalted all of a sudden. He was famous overnight. Because William Hurst, or whatever his name is, Randolph Hurst, said, Puff Graham. So he's in the papers all over the nation. All of a sudden, Billy Graham is famous. Now, that was the Holy Ghost told that, song, that guy to do that. Mm -hmm. Now it would be all over the Internet. Go mm -hmm. viral in one day. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But he had the power. See, the media has power. Mm -hmm. yes. And even though in this administration, in this time, the, the people on the left, are so goofed up, they've taken the Ten Commandments off the walls of our, of our uh, 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 courts. They've taken prayer out of schools. They've taken the ability for a child to name the name of Jesus. They've taken your ability to name the name of Jesus from your job. They've taken all these... How, what, how could it get this way? And even though that is happening, I want you to know, Jesus Christ is still on the throne. He is still able to bring revival in one soul at a time as we minister to people on and on and on. It's not time for rebellion. It's time for reformation in our own lives. The word of the Lord came forth. Get the idols out of your life. Return to your first love and allow God to come and exalt you in due time so that you can minister in that gifting that God has put in you at this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. That was good, God. Amen. That was really good. I like that. Now we go on. Now that, now that I got you out of the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So it was true. He did love him. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in that place where he was. Interesting. God shows up on time, not necessarily on our time. Yeah. <laughs> so when he heard that he was sick, okay. And after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. Now, now listen. The disciples didn't say anything when he was hanging out for two more days. They loved Lazarus. They liked Lazarus. But they were 
hanging out where they were because in Judea, if they went up there, they're going to die. So they didn't say nothing about Jesus hanging out, but when he says, let's go up there, look what they said. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you and you're going there again? We can see why you're hanging out here. Jesus answered, there are, there are, <laughs> are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the daytime, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go to wake him up. Now Jesus is saying some supernatural things here. You notice in verse 8, the disciples are thinking in the natural. Okay? Now watch this. When Jesus said to his disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. There they are back in the flesh again. Thinking in the natural. I want you to notice how this changes from the natural to supernatural to the natural to supernatural and how all these people are thinking not in the spirit. We have got to, in this life, begin to walk by faith and in the spirit of God rather than what we see with our eyes. God told me this morning I was speaking out a cord and he says, go ahead and plug it in. It's the right way. I didn't even check. I just plugged it in. And went. Usually, it's flipped over and I can't get it in. But the Lord told me, just as he showed me that cord, so he can show us how to speak into other people's lives prophetically. Amen. God is able to guide us and lead us in everything. Not only in the little plug-in things, but in the hairy things. And gives a tongue back here. And somebody over here interprets the tongue to one individual. Somebody back here gives another word. Somebody back here gives another word. It's all in the Spirit. It's a prophetic thing. Amen. Hallelujah. God is able not only to guide you to find your wallet, but to find some lost soul that needs Jesus. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> and I'm glad. <laughs> now he could have left it there. They'd have freaked out, right? He says, I'm glad for your sakes I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let's go down there. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go also that we may die with him. There they are back in the natural. <laughs> now they have faith to follow Jesus. They have faith to go down and die. <clears throat> but they have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so they're functioning by faith, but not in the spirit. We've got to watch ourselves, guys. Just because we know the word says something doesn't necessarily mean that's the word for today. Just because it's the logos doesn't mean it's the rhema of God. Hallelujah. So, when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many Jews had joined the women around, women around Martha and Mary to comfort concerning their brother. There they are, back in the flesh. They're going to comfort him. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now, Martha said to Jesus, Lord... If you'd been here, my, my, my brother wouldn't have died. You are late. She's back in the flesh. See this? Now watch this. But she shows a little faith. Watch this. But even now, I know whatever you ask God, he'll give you. So she's got some faith there. <laughs> Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Supernatural. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. So she knew about the resurrection. She knew about the resurrection on the last day, but she wasn't quite in the spirit. She's walking by faith, but not quite in the spirit. Now watch this. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? what she said. She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. Now, I love this lady. She got the word, man. She's got faith. She understands who Jesus is. She's functioning, but not quite in the spirit. 
And when she said these things, she went away secretly and called Mary, her sister, and said, the teacher's come, he's calling for you. He was not. <laughs> now she's really in the flesh, she's lying. Right? This is interesting. And as soon as she heard that, she's probably trying to, Jesus really likes Mary, so I'll go get her. <laughs> right? She didn't know her to speed after all. You know? As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in a place where Martha had met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw Mary rose up quickly and went out, they followed her saying, she is going to the tomb to weep there. Back in the flesh. Now all of these things are right to do. You understand what I'm saying? All of these things are good things that these people are thinking. They're going to weep with her. They're trying to comfort her. Uh, she's pumping her by faith. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, fell down at his feet saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You are late. I want you to know some of us, even now, pray things that aren't in the will of God. We just want them to happen so bad that we're begging God that they would happen. Over and over and over, we beg him and beg him and beg him. What we need to do is get to where we're hearing God. What he's saying at that point in time. That's right. And speaking that. That's right. Yeah. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews came to her weeping, that he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Here we go. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? They were right. He could have. <laughs> then Jesus again groaning in himself. And that word groaning is uh, the word used to express anger in uh, to indicate a speaking or acting in deep feeling and a stern admonishment. There was something inside of him that was just disturbed by, this, by these people just thinking like this and they're weeping and functioning in the flesh rather than in the spirit. Sometimes when people die we get to groaning so much we go on and on and on for months grieving for those who have died. Even though we know they are Christians, even though we know they're in heaven, dancing on the streets of glory with the Lord, however that looks to you, even though we know that, we grieve and grieve and grieve and pray. You can grieve yourself to death. I know many people who have grieved themselves to death. They die. You notice that some, some people, when they're together a long time, and one person dies, a year later, the other one's dead. Why? Because they grieve themselves to death. Instead of going on, find what God has for them. This life isn't all about that person you're hanging around. This life is about Jesus Christ and His glory. This life is about me serving Him. This life is about Him and them. That's right. Why would I grieve? Because it's about me. I miss Him. I miss her. Then Jesus, again groaning Himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Supernatural, right? Martha... The sister of him who was dead said to him, Lord, at this time, he, there's a stench. He's been in there for four days. Now, like Jesus didn't know that. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone. Praise the Lord, they took away the stone. Otherwise, Lazarus would have had to come out there and push the sucker over. <laughs> He took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and the Lord lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. There was no lack in Jesus. There was no lack in life or death or anything else. There was no lack in his heart. He knew stuff. And I know that you always hear me, but because these people are standing by, I said that. That they would believe that you sent me. So Jesus has been communing with the Lord all the time. He knew what he was going to do. He knew the Father needed to be glorified. 
He already knew that he was going to get glorified through this like we read, right? Praise the Lord. Now watch this. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth! And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to him, them, loose him and let him go. Praise the Lord. I just love this whole thing. Now watch this. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mar with had, who had come to Mary and had seen these things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away and ratted on him. <laughs> and told the Pharisees. Oh the Lord. So all of these things. Um, in fact, now let's just stop there. Okay. Now, so when Jesus heard that <clears throat> Lazarus was sick, he stayed two more days in the place he was. Why? Because he wanted them to see the supernatural power of God. That's why he wanted them to do. Okay? We need to realize sometimes when God isn't answering our prayer right away, it's probably that he wants the power and the supernatural power of God to be seen. Mm -hmm. If we just had some faith inside of us and got rid of our idols and started walking in the Spirit, Maybe our first love would say, Lord, what do you want done for with this? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, I wrote down here in uh, Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 34th verse says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go to the 12th chapter. Same, same book. Mm -hmm. See? Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. We're in Luke now? Well, no, no, we're still in John. John 12. But I just wanted you to see that. Jesus looked down off the cross. Off the cross. They had driven nails in his hands. They just whipped him 39 times. Smacked him around. They drove nails in his feet. He looks down off the cross and says, Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. When's the last time somebody did something to you? You are so mad at them, you flipped them off and wanted to punch them in the face? <laughs> And Jesus looking down off the cross, same spirit that dwells in him dwells in you. Looking down off the Father, forgive, they don't know what they're doing. If that person knew that you were a child of God and you were going to heaven and they were going to heaven, they would not have done that. So what we need to do, the same spirit that Jesus did say, Father, forgive them. They can't know what they're doing, otherwise they wouldn't be doing that. They must not know. Some people are ignorant. Some people are 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 knowledgeable, but they just won't repent anyway. Because <laughs> they want to be mad. Well, I've done that before. I'll tell you what. Praise the Lord, I've done it. I like the 12. 12 uh, um, in the 12th chapter, the 12th through the 19th verse says, The next day a multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches and palm trees and met him, and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, and it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified. Stop there just for a minute. The people who have died in the Lord have been glorified. <laughs> I don't know if you get that. Glorified. Mm -hmm. So they're glorified. So what are you bawling about? Oh, I, I miss them. Okay. Okay. Therefore the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb, he was raised from the dead, uh, bore witness. Mm -hmm. For this reason the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. <coughs> And the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are, what, are accomplishing nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. So even the Pharisees at this point in time had given up. Because Jesus was so dang famous at this point in time. If they went after him, those people would have killed him dead. So I want you to know, when God begins to exalt you and to use you and manifest his glory through you, at first probably people will be so excited and they will be looking at you. But don't get nervous. A week later, they were yelling, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. But at first, at first, we don't want to get hung up in what people are looking at us and saying, ooh, ooh, ooh. Next week they might be going, ooh, ooh. All right? Praise the Lord. This is important stuff. Because it says in 23 of the same chapter, it says here, And Jesus answered and said to them, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. There it is again. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. Now listen to this. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am there, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Isn't that amazing? He who loves his life will lose it, but he who hates his life in this world will gain it to life eternal. I want you to know there's a lot of stuff on the TV and whatnot trying to give you the best life you can have. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a guy who likes comfort, and I like good stuff, and I like, I, I even like brand names. Mm -hmm. I do. I like it. Because why? Because they make good stuff. Usually the brand name guys make better stuff than the other guys. Mm -hmm. But in this world, when it comes to my relationship with God, that stuff doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. What I have doesn't mean nothing. If I have a place to live, and it's hard to say that, doesn't mean anything. Whatever I experience in this life, the guys in Hebrews 11, they were sawed in half. They lived in caves. They were naked. They were all of whom the world was not worthy. Where are we at in our relationship with God? Have we returned to our first love? Have our hearts opened so much that we could care less about anything right here in this world? Even our relationship with our spouses, is that so important that we forsake what we see God doing? Are we supposed to minister to our wives and husbands? Absolutely. Are we supposed to love them? Uh, unconditionally, of course. But if it comes between us and our relationship with God, it's out of base. It's out of line. It's not okay. Sorry, guys on TV. So the world says it pretty, the Lord says it pretty, pretty plain. Okay. So, he who loves his life, <laughs> look at that, he says, follow, serve, and die. <laughs> Isn't that something? But look what it says, follow me, serve me, be a servant of mine. So what happens when you begin to follow him and serve him, and you are his servant, he takes care of you. I'm yet to see the righteous forsaken or their seed of begging for bread. It's just the way it is. When we give our lives to Him and to those around us, then He takes care of us. No doubt about it. There's no way getting around it. He just takes care of me. I don't have to worry about me. Worry not what you should eat, what you should drink, where you should live, what you should drive. Worry about that other guy. What is he driving? What's he eating? What's he, what's he wearing? <clears throat> Isn't that true? Yes. Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve and give us a life a ransom for many. Have this yes. mind in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God. He laid it down. He laid it down. If we lay down our lives, we be happy. That's what happens. We get happy after that. And when we do forsake those things, those idols in our life, then not only are we happy, we're powerful. Because you can't, you can't have idols in your life and be powerful. It's really, really, really difficult. So if you have some idols in your life, just lay them down, return to your first love, get rid of the idols, and power will be yours. That's the way I read it. If you read it different, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Walk while you have the light. Otherwise, darkness will overtake you. 35 and 36, same chapter. Jesus said to them, a little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not worry, know where he is going. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. The Lord is telling me, there's darkness on the world today, and if you submit to it, you're walking in it. 
He says, take the light that you have and walk in it. Take the light that you have and walk in it. Walk before the Lord. Follow Him. You can walk in the light or you can walk in darkness. It's really, really, truly yours. In fact, I read a story today where a woman wanted to see her mom. So the Lord took her to heaven to see her mom. And her mom was sitting on a rock. Sitting on a rock on this lake. She had her feet dangling in the water. And it's, it's beautiful. And the lady oh, and went up to her mom. She says, mom says, hey, stick your feet in the water. It's really nice. Stuck her foot in the water. Wow, oh, that is Wow, the peace of God was all over and all these things. And at the end, she says, this is nice, but where is he? She says, where's Jesus? She says, well, he's here. He's the sun. He's the lake. He's, he's beautiful, isn't he? This is him. This is him. She said, okay. But the Lord went back. He says, do you want to, in eternity, you want to sit on a rock? No, I want to sit on a rock. I'm doing something. <laughs> I want to get. I want you to give me some something to do. I want to be moving around. I want to sit on a rock, even though it's cool. It's really nice sitting on that rock. But I'm not a. In other words, what you do here counts for there. Mm -hmm. The lady got saved. She was in heaven. Her daughter led her to the Lord before she died. Just a couple days, and so she was on a rock having a groovy time. But me, I don't want to sit on a rock. For eternity, I want to be doing something too. I want to be good. So what you do here as you serve God here really counts for there. So as you forsake stuff here, don't worry. It'll be over abundantly supplied in the future in that place where you're going. There are levels of glory, y'all. There's better stuff in heaven than just sitting on a rock playing a harp, dangling your feet in the water. I want to rule a planet at least. <laughs> what do you want to do? I want to do it here too. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But 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 if I have my eyes on that, then I can give this up. If I have my eyes on that, then this doesn't matter that much. Okay, let's go on here. Oh yeah. Luke Luke twenty three. I want to no 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 wait wait wait. Um um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah. John 12 still. The 42nd verse says, Nevertheless, among some of the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Ooh, they believed, but they did not confess him because they wanted people to look at them good. Don't be like that, you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't bow down to that deal. Well, I just don't want to say it. It's just not cool right now. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. When it's cool and when it's not cool. When it's okay or when it's not okay. Be aware of what God is doing and do that. Speak that. Go there. Praise the Lord. Don't let the fear of man overtake you. In fact, in Second uh, Corinthians says we're going to have this place in heaven. Okay? Cat Kerr went to heaven like, I don't know, a thousand times or whatnot. She says it's a pretty cool place. I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm. If you want to know about her, go find out. Okay? Remember Rahab? It says in James 2.25 that she is justified by what she did, even though she was in fear of retribution. She was afraid of the people, but she was not like the Pharisees. She forsook the fear of the people, feared God more, stuck them up in the rafters and saved them alive, and therefore saved her life alive, and therefore she is a descendant of Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ is a descendant of hers. She's in the line of the Lord. This, this whore that was living there in Jericho, praise the Lord, she lived. She is the only one, her and her house, she's the only one. Isn't that the coolest thing you ever heard? Why? Because she didn't fear them as much as she feared the Lord. And what did she say? Oh, you guys, you guys. Everybody's afraid of you guys. Isn't that right? She says, the fear of you has gone on to all of us. Everybody's saying, man, the Lord their God is with them. You know? 
And they're scraped, so they shut the doors of Jericho, great big walls and stuff. They thought they were safe inside of there. Anyway. We are designed to believe what we see. We need to see in a different way, in a different realm. In our passage, Jesus saw in a different realm. Okay? In 2 Corinthians 10.3, and I got this from Pastor Winston. We were watching part of this, and he says, uh, he says, it says they're casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself above the Lord. What about your Holy Ghost imagination? What about the good part of your imagination? You've been using that? <laughs> your imagination will tear down the walls of your natural thinking. If you can imagine something, look at Walt Disney. They have a thing called Imagineering. They just get people in a room and just think stuff up. They just imagine stuff. Let's imagine this. Well, yeah, it's cool. Let's imagine this. That's cool. What are you imagining? What are you using your imagination for? It says, let's you cast down every imagination, everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Well, what are you imagining in your knowledge of God that He wants to do in this earth? You, in the last days, you poured out a spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Whoa! Let's not let anything kill our dreamer Amen. or our visioner. Amen. Right? Let's not let anything kill that thing. Go ahead and dream. Go ahead and envision stuff. Go ahead and imagine stuff. If you have faith to do something, maybe God, maybe God, that's God in you trying to get you to do something. And if we wait, we were talking about this before. If we wait, we might never get to it. We were talking about that this morning. How, how many days did you think about before you ever made one of those sculptures? Nine days in a row. Nine days in a row. He thought about it for years before he ever made one of those sculptures. If you ever seen one of those sculptures he makes out of barbed wire and stuff, wow! It's like, whoa! Looks like it's a lot. I mean, but he looked one day, one time he, he, he did nine days. He simply thought about it for nine days and he put his hands in doing it. Up come, what did you make first? A full size horse in about eight hours. Wow. Wow. I mean, come on, you guys. That's imagineering, man. Yeah. That's thinking about something that the Holy Spirit has put inside of you. That's doing something. Yeah. You might have ideas inside of you that God is stirring something inside of you. I don't give a hoot how old you are, how young you are. That's not the point. If God has put something inside of you and you can imagine it, maybe God just wants you to get with it. How long do we think about building that little building over there? Years, man. You know what it, what it came down to? The Lord had to speak to me. <laughs> I'm serious. The Lord had to speak to me to get me off my sorry butt. Because I was looking at all the bent wood and stuff like that. And he says, just go out and start. That was the word he gave. Remember that? Just go start it. I thought, build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> Your good imagination, your Holy Ghost imagination, takes you past your natural limits and moves you into faith. Moves you into faith, okay? Oh, by the way, and I know I'm going a long time, poor Buster. Yeah. This, uh, <laughs> one time we were doing a vacation Bible school. I know this is an old story. We are doing a vacation Bible school. We were sitting at uh, the wigwam. And we had a napkin. And I said, well, what do you want? Because I was reading uh, Habakkuk then, her Habakkuk. And it says, write down the vision. So she drew out this thing. The birdhouse, the, the pond, a duck, a pig, uh, a fence, a po rail fence. Part of it's still there. The next day, now get this, we drew it out. We drew it out, prayed over it. The next day, we had a duck, we had a pig, we had a pond, we had a rail fence, we even had a birdhouse. And it just showed up. We didn't go get it, it showed up. One lady brought the duck, another lady brought a pig, you want a pig? <laughs> well, we live in the middle of town, what do I want a pig for, you know? Anyway, the guy brought over and said, Gary Rains. You guys need some fencing? I got this rail fence. You want some fencing? Well, yeah. 
And then he's unloading it and all his dust and dirt and stuff. He says, oh yeah, I got this whole birdhouse. You want this whole birdhouse? Right on top of a pole. And Regina goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever we can imagine, write it down. Say it. In fact, in fact, we are designed to believe what we can see. So what can you see? And on and on it goes. I could go through all these scriptures. But it says in Proverbs 30, the 30th proverb, it's a good one, man. Proverbs 30, and it says in the 32nd verse, and this is an interesting verse. It says, if you have been foolish in exalting yourself, and if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. <clears throat> Look at that. If you have been foolish in exalting yourself, or if you have devised evil, put your hand on your mouth. In other words, if you're thinking about it, don't say it. That's right. That's right. Because when you say it, something happens in the spiritual realm, becomes a reality. And if you're stupid and you're devising evil, sometimes when you finally say it, don't say it. If you're thinking about evil, say something good. Manifest the opposite. Do something different. Yeah. Praise the Lord. On and on it goes. It's just amazing. Um, put your hand in your mouth. Your words control your body. In James 3, 1 and 2, it, sa uh, it says, I'm going to read it. James 3, 3, 1 and 2 says, My brother, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive the stricture judgment. For we stumble in many things. Anyone who does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to control the whole body. He who, is, he who does not stumble in word can control his whole body. Your body is controlled by what you say. That's pretty freaky. All right. Let's go to Hebrews 11 now. We're almost done. Past you. Before James, yeah. Okay, and I've been in Hebrews 11, I know, for months. <laughs> but, we were there anyway. <clears throat> Hebrews 11, we've read this scripture over and over. It says, and these all died, speaking of the heroes of faith, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Oh, man. They were assured of them, they embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now, look at this. Those who say such things declare plainly that you seek, they seek a homeland. They who say these things declare. I decree and declare, da, 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 da. Remember Joel Osteen, every time he gets up, I decree and declare. Why would he do that? Because it says right here, those who say such things declare plainly that they're seeking a homeland. They don't seek one here. They got their eyes on a different place. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now look down here in the, um, let's jump down to the uh, 16th verse. It says, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Why? For he has prepared, prepared for them a city. Why did he prepare for them a city? Because they believed he had one. <laughs> God gets busy when we believe him. You know, Jesus went to prepare a place for you. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have said it. He ain't going to leave us orphans here. Hallelujah. Now in the 26th verse, I got a definition. It says, um, uh, uh, this is about Moses. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, and he looked to the reward. Now listen to this. This is the uh, in the in the uh, Strong's Concordance. It says a graphic word combines two: away from and to see. The word literally means to look away from everything else in order to lo look intently on one object. What were we singing this morning? Jesus, only you. Jesus, Jesus, it's only you. Moses looked away from the wealth of this world system towards a messianic future. I want to read that little thing again. The word literally means to look away from everything else 
in order to look intently on one object. So what is our, what do we see? What do we see? Okay. I want to read this too. In the ninth chapter of the same, same book, in the 24th verse, it says, For Jesus has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into the heaven, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So jump down there to 27 and 28 and it says, and as, and as it is appointed for men to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly await for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. I, I'm serious about this. If you are not eagerly waiting for him, you, you do the math. Let me read it again. For Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly await for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. If you care more about this world, Jesus will let you have it. God will let you have it. If that's all you want, that's all you'll get. The Pharisees, all they want was the praise of men, so they stood on corners and prayed out loud. So everybody saw that they were praying. They'd wear these long things and all these tassels and crap on them. And they wanted people to see them. The Bible says they have their reward. If all you want out of this life is here, then that's what you'll get. That scares the crap out of me. I don't know if it scares you. The fear of God is on me, you guys. Because God is speaking to me the exact same things. Get rid of your idols. Find out what God has for you and do that. And quit looking at this world. And quit walking in the natural. Start walking in the spirit. Yes. What do you see? What can you see? If you can see it, you can believe it. If you can believe it, it'll come to pass. And you begin to speak what you say. If you're not saying, just keep your mind. If you're devising evil, put your hand over. Don't say it. Say what you want, not what you have. Now I'm going to read a couple more scriptures. <coughs> In the 10th chapter of the Hebrews, two more scriptures. In the 10th chapter of Hebrews, 35 through 38. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while he is coming. He will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to perdition, but to those who believe to the saving of the soul. Now in the Revelation, the last chapter, towards the very end, it says in the, it says in the seventh verse, it says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. In 12 it says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. In the 20th verse he says, He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. So we say that right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, we, we thank you that you are on your way. That you are the one who's here. We thank you, God. That you, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we were praying this morning, uh, some people had a, a word about God walking. They had a word about God walking through our neighborhoods. And just and answering the prayers that people have prayed. He said, it's a, it's a done deal. Don't back up. Because he's answering. He's walking through the neighborhood. And God gave me a picture of Jesus walking through the neighborhood, right? And another picture he gave me of a movie I saw that, that Santa Claus was jumping from house to house into their chimneys. <laughs> like that. And the, and the word we got was, you know, Jesus is coming quickly, but he's not in a hurry. Mm -hmm. He's coming quickly, but he's not in a hurry. Isn't that interesting? He's not in a hurry. He's walking through the neighborhoods. He's chill, man. He's cool. He's not nervous. He's not in a hurry. But he's not tarrying either. 
So Lord, thank you for letting us give today. We are thankful for your word and your will. Thank you for blessing us so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Woo! Well, that was just a wild time. The worship started it out. It's his fault. <laughs> Remember Joshua when he went in with the ten spies? Caleb and Joshua? He went in with the ten spies? And what did they see? A land flowing with milk and honey. Let's go get it. And the other guys just saw the giants. They saw it was land flowing with milk and honey, but then they saw the giants, and that's what stuck in their minds. They didn't just see the giants, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Ah! Isn't that something? How you see yourself is really important. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So that's Joshua another. and Caleb said, yeah, but we can take them. Yeah. In fact, they said, they're our bread. Yeah. <laughs> they're our bread. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They brought back a, one thing of grapes on a pole between them. I grow grapes. They're pretty nice grapes. They have bundles about like that. You know, and just they're sweet and beautiful. I do not have to carry them on a pole between me and my kids. <laughs> the grapes must have been as big as your hand, and the things must have been this big. Yeah. Had to have been. What is that? Some of those things. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you guys. Have fun today. Ah.